afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, as I said a little earlier, I hope I'm not preaching to the choir. Uh, but this is a subject that I have become very passionate about. And um, being it's telling stories, I've broken the presentation down into several chapters. And I'm, we're going to talk about uh, postcards, uh, different types of postcards, and then how you can exhibit and at the end, we're going to talk about some resources. So overview of postcards. Um, postcards, as, as you all have been aware, have been around since the mid 1800s. They've had a heyday and they're, they're still around. Um, they've rather lost ground to the internet and email, but uh, during StampX two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I, just, uh, I joined Post Crossings. And so I'm hoping to get some postcards um, from around the world. As regards exhibiting, um, Australia and New Zealand have been having competitive exhibits since the mid 1900s, as does the Europeans. Here in the States, we started exhibiting in the early 2000s as a separate division. Um, when the new manual came out in 2017, we uh, became part of the general class. On the FIP side, um, there have been some exhibits, but they are mostly um, it has not been declared an official class yet. Okay, so in the early years, the really early postcards were private mailing cards. Uh, you would have them by hotels and businesses. Uh, then they were undivided, um, no message allowed. As you can see below, here is an example of uh, an undivided back. And then with rapid expansion of usage, um, period endings about June 30, 1908, 678 million postcards were mailed in the US versus the population of 88.7 million. So you can imagine how popular postcards were. Then you get into the golden era, uh, which is 1907 to 1915. Uh, these are include the real photograph postcards. They're highly popular. They became very touristy. Uh, people took them to villages and wherever they went. There was an explosion of publishers and printers uh, in enormous millions of subjects. And then a wide variety of types and gimmicks. I'm sure those of you who are postcard collectors uh, know about um, expanding ones and see-through ones and gimmicky ones, risque ones. So there's a wide variety. It turned out that many of them ended up by being produced and printed in Germany. <clears throat> Moving on to the 30s and 60s, um, the linen area came in. And as you can see, here's an example of a linen one. You can see the texture. Um, and also a lot of them are either banded in yellow or white. So that's another way of being able to um, age the card as to whether it's what period it is. Then from 1939 to now, it, you have the photochromes. Uh, they're very good reproductions of photographic art. Again, every subject that's possible to be photographed is. is. <clears throat> they're very colorful, but now they're more collectible than mail. Do you find them in a lot of hotels and uh, museums and everywhere? And people seem to sort of collect them rather than mail them. And also, uh, again, there's a specific audience of more collectors. For me personally, I don't like the chromes. I think they can be a bit garish. Moving on to chapter two, uh, we're going to, I'm going to show you um, a wide variety of subjects that you can be collected and then can be made into stories. And you're going to recognize some of the exhibitors. Phil Steger, uh, who lives in St. Petersburg, is really known as the Palm Nut. And this is an, a one frame exhibit on a tour uh, of the Royal Palm. He says that he saw, this exhibit is probably about 10 years old. And he says it's a good example of how you can collect a subject without having to spend a lot of money. As when you start a tour, where, how do you start? So he starts his tour with leaving on a train. And you can see this, the top one is a real photo postcard and the bottom one is a linen era. And where do you, if you're on a tour, where do you stay? 
So here are various pictures of various posts of hotels. Excuse me. Then he <clears throat> went to show other countries that where the palms grow, Barbados, and finishes up with some really unusual palms, like the palm, the palm restaurant in Budapest or this beautiful stalactite. Another one from uh, Phil. This one started uh, by a guy called Elliot Lander, who is sadly uh, deceased, who gave him the last postcard in the exhibit. And from that, uh, Phil built a whole exhibit around. So it really is up to you as to what triggers your imagination. Um, is it one postcard? Is it a subject? Is it something you just say, oh, I need to collect that. I want to do that. So he built a whole one frame exhibit. So this is his uh, first page where he's giving the purpose of the exhibit, a plan, and then showing a lovely uh, schematic of the ship. Unfortunately, the Eastland uh, burnt and sank. So he's showing you pictures of what happened. But then it came back to life and it came back to life as the USS Willamette. So you can see that you can really um, collect postcards throughout a whole period. This is an exhibit by um, Bill Schultz. And for those of you who are going to be attending the Postal History Symposium next week, he's going to, give me, going to be giving a talk on toll gates and uh, toll roads. So here he's collected, he, so he's collected uh, toll gates around the country and they were all very important. I mean, it's a very important part of philately in the toll gates and how the post uh, went through them. In a lot of exhibits, particularly when you get into multi-frame ones, it's okay to put some other material in. And here you can see he's put a page of the rates of the tolls. Also, not again, not a typical postcard, but here is a stereo view, so it's a real photo. And then he's finished up with a really good epilogue of whatever toll gate looks like now, which is, guess what, there's an easy pass. And as a little aside, I just got a note from the Florida Department of Transportation saying, I went through a toll gate in August at six o'clock in the morning and I didn't pay the toll. Well, it wasn't me and it wasn't my number plate, so who knows who it was. <clears throat> this is a, an exhibit by Jay Stotts. He found this lovely book on summer tours of the C&B line and decided to do an exhibit around that. And so he went, and again, uh, there was this lady earlier who said that she's part of the Metropolitan Postcard. When you have a subject that you want to collect, it makes going to stamp shows, it makes going to postcard shows or eBay or whatever you want so much more fun because you're looking for a specific uh, subject. So here he has his um, purpose, background, treatment, scope, importance, very much like a philatelic exhibit and we'll discuss that later. So he's broken his exhibit down into uh, various trips. So this is from the Chicago to South Haven route that went from 1903 to 1906. So he's showing the ships and as they went through the, the, the bridges, under the bridges. <clears throat> this would be one of the stops. This was trip 10, 29. And he's showing pictures of Saratoga Springs, the hotel, the inside of the hotel, which are very difficult to find inside hotel postcards. And then why do you go to Saratoga? You go there for the races. Here's another, this was trip six. And it's, this was on Lake Michigan. And so he's showing you, which is very helpful, a little map of where the trip went. And then some really lovely postcards of people sailing on Lake Michigan. And then rather like Phil started his cruise or his trip of the Palms uh, on a train, um, Jay is ending his on taking a train back to home where you, you came from. And this one is by our own Dawn. Um, I don't know. Do you want to talk about this, Dawn? 
Unmute yourself. Yeah. Um, I kept finding uh, postcards that showed ostriches and I wondered what the heck is this about? And I found out it was an ostrich farm in California in the early 20th century. So I told it this on this page about the uh, fad of ostrich wearing ostrich feathers in ladies hats. And this shows the ostrich farm. It was became the leading uh, tourist destination in Southern California. Again, people took the train. Uh, ostriches are huge things. They would throw them oranges and they could hold up to uh, nine oranges in their neck. Okay, you can go to the next one. Uh, these are some specialized things um, showing people uh, around town. And this card right, here, right in the upper right is um, a three-dimensional card. So I was able to find some kind of unusual things. And this is uh, by Kathy Johnson. Kathy Johnson uh, started collecting Ceylon uh, many years ago and has a fantastic philatelic exhibit on uh, tea growing, coffee and tea growing in Ceylon. And as she was working on her philatelic exhibit, uh, she suddenly realized that there were a whole lot of postcards. And so she's put a one frame exhibit together on elephants and working elephants in Ceylon and how they were used, the characterizations of, where, of the uh, elephants, what they needed, what they would kind of do. And then unfortunately the demise of elephants and uh, we still today read about ele elephants being hunted for their tusks. This is an uh, exhibit by uh, Bill DiPaolo and this is so you can do one on a town. I mean, I'm, sh I'm trying to show you such a variety of uh, materials and subjects that, oh, someone hopefully you're going to have the aha moment. Oh, I can do one of those. <clears throat> so this is about Las Vegas. Here again, a very useful tool when you're exhibiting is to do a street map of showing where um, the city is. And then he also did a timeline to organize his exhibit. And this is how it began. It was a desert rest stop. And then the trains came in and so it grew. Hotels started and then it became a big casino area. And where is it going? I mean, it's going to, this is now totally different from when it was as a little stop on the railway line. This is another one of Dawn. Okay, Dawn, you might as well talk by me. <laughs> This is about the Pan American, the Pan American Pacific, the Pan, I'm sorry, the Panama Pacific International Exposition, a big world's fair in 1915 in San Francisco. Um, this is a big exhibit, uh, eight frames, uh, because there's a big story to tell. This is the, obviously the title page. Uh, I can't read what this, oh, this, this one uh, is a little bit out of order. This is the epilogue. And basically this shows postcards that were uh, produced for the 2015 centennial celebration. And the one in the lower right corner is from Westpex. They celebrated the fair and showed the stamp that was issued at the fair. It's my fault they're out of order. <laughs> this, Oops, sorry. <clears throat> Hang on. There we are. Uh, no, this is at the very beginning. This is how people got to the yep. fair. Um, it, you see it was big, it covered five miles. They had all kinds of new uh, contraptions, vehicles to uh, take people around the fair, uh, trackless trains and all kinds of things which were quite phenomenal for 1915. In the lower left is a ticket. Uh, that's another case of where it's okay to add uh, non postcard items if you do it judiciously. Okay, this is one of my exhibits. Um, I don't know how many of you knew, are aware of Houston. Um, 
they it's not a WSP show, but it's a really great show, and they pick a color every year. And so several years ago, um, they picked red, and I was saying, okay, what can I do with red? And so I decided to um, see what I could find with Little Red Riding Hood. And I managed to find enough postcards to do a one frame exhibit. What was really interesting was the fact that most of them are European. Um, uh, quite a few of them are series. And so you're starting off with a colored real photograph on the title page. And I show what the purpose is and a plan. And then at the epilogue is how um, the wolf was shot, was shot, sorry, shot. And the hunter uh, opened the wolf up and grandma and uh, Little Red Riding Hood were allowed to escape. I mean, grim fairy tales are rather um, gruesome. And so it was interesting that this is a children's nursery rhyme, but actual fact is, um, quite gruesome for a child. This was another of my exhibits. Um, this one started, my aha moment in collecting this subject was doing um, a multi-frame exhibit on a uh, menu for the Portland Hotel in Oregon in 1916. And it's a display exhibit. So I was looking for anything that I could put in it and came across um, a lemon an exaggerated lemon and decided, well, this is fun. And then I did some more research and found that this guy, Edward Mitchell, um, was known for his photo montage. And photo montage is where you take a picture of the fruit or vegetable. And then you take a picture of the rail of the rail of the carriage and the background. And then you put them all together and take another photograph. And then they get colorized. And so this is an interesting picture in the fact that because a lot of people would steal colors, pictures. So of the four of these, only this one down here in the lower right hand corner is an Edward Mitchell. The others are all stolen. I organized this one uh, because how, you know, it's all the same publisher. It's all the same printing method. It's all the same method of photo montage. How was I going to organize it? So I started at the top of the tree with apples and I went all the way through down to carrots and potatoes because they were in the ground. So I did it on a, on a down slide. Uh, <clears throat> this is interesting. I managed to find out all the postcards that he had. I found the, the numbers and everything. And um, we were actually on a, another friend and I were on our way to York for the postcard show in November. And I was showing my friend um, that I was looking for one of the original um, photo montage pictures and came across this potato here in the middle. And I said, oh shoot, here am I saying, I have every one of them, but I don't, I did this, this one. So went to York, went around all the dealers of which there's probably about a hundred and um, not, not one in the world. About a year later, I happened to be in St. Louis at the stamp show there and went up to one of the stamp dealers and said, oh, you got any exaggerated postcards? And the guy said, oh yeah, sure, here. And lo and behold, this one here cost me all of $5. So you never know where you're going to find postcards. This is another Houston exhibit. Um, this, the color was purple. And so I went looking for um, purple, whatever, and decided on lilacs. And I organized this one by uh, time periods. So it was a year, lilac sentiments, New Year, Valentine, Easter, Christmas, birthday, greeting and condolence. So this was my title page. This is the last page of the end of the exhibit. And this is a helpful thing both for postcard exhibits and philatelic exhibits. If you get to the point where, as in this one, there's a, I only had one condolence card. By dropping a line down, it makes a visual di distinction. So this doesn't look so strange um, as one card by itself. 
this was another Houston show. Um, I, I put these in because I wanted to be able to tell you um, as to, you know, what you can do and, and how, and the fact it doesn't take, okay, in Dawn's case where she had eight frames and spent a lot of time, these were one frames and I really wanted to do them to show you that you can do them without spending an awful lot of money and you can have great fun. This was the National Orange Show in San Bernardino. Um, and I went from 1911 to when it was first started as a national show to 1949. And interesting enough, I haven't been able to find a postcard of when it was first started. So I have a scan from a newspaper. And then it burnt, July 18th, 1949, the whole thing burnt. And what I find is very strange or interesting in this is that there are so many postcards around of burning buildings, uh, San Francisco burning, other places burning, but nobody took, even not even a real photo postcard of this big convention center burning. So um, I put in scans. It, um, it didn't do too well, it got a silver. I think because of the scans um, and also it was um, last year when the Houston show got um, flooded out and so it wasn't judged by the, the judges who were, were meant to be judging it was judged by two judges who happened to be there anyway it was fun to do and this is another exhibit I'm working on um, as I said, the people stole photographs and there were very multiple photographs. In this one, I've picked the, I have a, another exhibit on Poland Spring and I found that I was acquiring a whole lot of postcards. And then surprisingly, I found I had a whole lot that looked exactly the same. They were the, exactly the same view of the hotel. I thought, well, why don't we put those together? So I've now got about 25. Um, so, and it has you, this one is by uh, G.W. Morris of Portland, Maine, printed in Germany, mailed in 1908. This is another page, I haven't done very much on it, but again, you can see the same hotel, the driveways, the, the entranceway is changing, the vehicles are changing, the people walking are changing, um, the hotel stays the same, but they're getting different awnings. So I think when it's finished, um, it's going to be a fun exhibit to show um, how the hotel changed as regards um, people, vehicles, going from 1907 to, I think, probably my latest one is about 1960. So that is about the various subjects and um, whatever, you know, the aha moments that are going to uh, get you excited about doing an exhibit. So now I'm going to give you a brief um, um, overview of how to set up an exhibit. You need to understand the rules and I apologize if I'm preaching to the choir of the, those of you who already do this. Uh, reading the judging manual, uh, chapter three uh, about the big four, the specific guidelines for post Post the postcards and the glossary of understanding terms. <clears throat> Every exhibit needs a title page and a synopsis. It has to have treatment, research and knowledge, rarity and presentation. The title page contains uh, what your subject is, uh, when did the subject occur, where did it happen, and then you also have to put a statement as what is the purpose of the exhibit, why are you doing this exhibit? Uh, no, what was the, what was your motive? Did you find an aha moment? You want to show this, you want to talk about this. Then to give a plan so that the people viewing the exhibit and um, the judges can see it. And then at the end, the informational sources as to what. The title page you had to remember is your invitation to the exhibit. Um, you want to, I mean, why do you exhibit? You exhibit because um, you're passionate about your subject so you want to invite people in to see it. So um, 
make your title page as attractive as you can. Treatment means how are you telling the story? Your plan gives you an outline and then you can have chapters and headings. The outline should also have a beginning, a middle and an end. Um, I do a lot of judging and a lot of sometimes exhibits, both postcards and philatelic exhibits. You go to the middle, you go to the beginning, you go to the end and you can see you go to the middle and you have absolutely no idea where you are. And so sometimes I say to people, do you have an outline? And they say, oh yes. And I say, fine, uh, if the frame opened and it fell out, could you put your exhibit back together again without looking at the numbers on the back? And usually there's like a little aha moment. Ah, yeah, I see what you mean about having chapters and headings, a beginning and a middle and an end. Treatment also includes the selection of material for your development. Um, it's very tempting. Um, to make the material fit the plan, but that's not sometimes the best thing. And also it's sometimes very sad to have to leave um, some items at home. Um, I call it leaving the, your favorite baby at home, but if it doesn't add to the story, um, it really shouldn't be there. And then the challenge of developing the story. Um, some of my one frames, there isn't a high challenge factor because it's I only took a year to do it and I managed to find the material. In Dawn's exhibit and um, the other multi frames, it becomes more of a challenge because you're looking for the esoteric cards, you're looking for the expensive cards. So you need that shows up in your treatment. In knowledge and research, um, as opposed to philatelic exhibit, exhibit <clears throat> we talk about um, the picture side of the postcard. So you need to say uh, what, talk about the card. In subject, develop the subject as you would any other exhibit. Uh, as we all know, research is Im very important and you need to know what you're talking about and that will come across in your uh, treatment and as your chapters. In the knowledge, just don't say what it says on the front of the card. Um, there's a whole lot of information on the back uh, when it was mailed, who it was mailed to, uh, who was the publisher, who was the printer, um, is it part of a series, because uh, you'll find the numbers on them, explain just what that the information means, um, don't say I think or maybe, try to be um, as positive as you can, and if there's no reference material and there's no publisher, um, say so, I mean, we would rather know that you couldn't find it than just to leave it empty. Rarity, um, very difficult with a postcard exhibit because they had so many and they printed so many. Um, if you are trying to do rarity, you really need to say, I've been, as I say here, estimates based on personal experience. Um, how long have you been collecting these? Uh, where have you been? Who have you talked to? What are the censuses? And then you can say, I've only seen this once or twice in my personal experience. So you can um, say the rarity. Um, I happen to think or like the fact that I think about it as a fishing expedition. If I put down, this is the only one known. Um, I'm not trying to brag, this is the only one known. I'm trying to say to people, um, if you have another one, tell me or if there's one around the corner, tell me, because then I know there are two. So I always look upon it as trying to increase the senses, increase my knowledge. Presentation, uh, again, is to make it, how attractive is it? Um, one of the problems with postcards is that they are in the majority horizontal. Uh, there aren't that many vertical ones. And if you just line them up across the page, um, you just get railroad tracks. So you want to try and move them around, move the text around so that you're not, don't have straight lines. Um, matting, I think really helps um, as it makes the postcard stand out as does non-white paper. 
quite often if you've got white bordered postcards or old ones and you just use white, they just bleed in and you, and you can't see the postcards. Overlapping postcards, um, as you might have noticed in the last frame of my um, exaggerated fruits, I had them overlapped because I have um, nearly 40 exhibits, 40 postcards in eight page, eight double pages. Um, so you can overlap them as long as you're not hiding anything that's important. Uh, David, different printer, um, dates, or anything is important. In Australia and New Zealand, they don't really like that because they think you're trying to um, hide something. Use of maps and others directly added are okay if necessary, particularly if you're doing um, like a trip. Uh, there's another friend of mine that has a trip up Broadway um, and he has a map so you know where you are in Broadway. Another friend has um, a tour of Bloemfontein in South Africa. Again, he has a map there so you can see where you are as you go through the town. So choosing subject and over, just an overview. Title page becomes very important. Uh, there are numerous subjects for subject, subject matters. You can have topical, geographical, uh, topographical, historical, narrative. You can do by artist, photographer, format. And then your story, treatment is always the story. Outline, 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 beginning and the middle and end. It must be logical and have a flow. And each page should advance the story. Choose the material that best develops the story. Choice shows the knowledge of the subject. Uh, best material to show the challenge factor. Uh, we've all heard about stories of you no know, crash mail and you have to have a burnt cover in there. But you really don't want postcards where the cancel is all over the postcard. It has rounded corners. It's torn unless it's the only one that you can show for your story. You want to attract people. So most attractive material for material and the best quality you can have. For your write up research and knowledge, implied knowledge by selection, explicit knowledge by accurate description of the material and of the postcards, the research utilizing published material available, and then whether you have done personal study and comes to some new conclusions. And then presentation, repeating this, arrangement that catches the eye of the viewer. Is it balanced? Do you have three page postcards on one and only two on the other? And does it look nice? I mean, sometimes you look at an exhibit and it's just people just haphazardly stuck it up there. Um, but you want to encourage people to read your exhibit, to look at your exhibit, and to make them want to, to also to exhibit, to, for them to say, aha, I can do this too. So in our final chapter, resources, have fun, tell stories, any questions? So first we have resources. Um, there's a lady on here said that she was the president of the Metropolitan Postcard Club. Uh, it is fantastic. It is a tremendous resource of publishers, um, printing methods. The postcard album in Germany um, is mostly concerned with real photo postcards, but they have a tremendous uh, resource of um, logos for the real photograph photographers. And this new out, I just um, bought my own copy. It is absolutely fabulous. It's a guidebook of collectible postcards by David Bowers and Mary Martin. Um, I, at the back of this, she has tremendous resources of publishers and some of their logos. So if you have a postcard, you just can see the logo, look in this, and um, she might be able to help you. Uh, the website here is for a um, seminar that was given in Wuhan in 2019 about exhibiting postcards. Uh, we all have multiple postcard exhibits. If you look out of print, A Books has a good source. Uh, I use a book called How to Identify Prints by Bamba Gascoigne, which tells you about offset lithograph, um, various types of printing methods. And then also um, 
our own favorite AAPE uh, for exhibiting help. And I should put down ATA for tropical help. 